All right, thank you for tuning in. Uh, on the phone is Michelle Dean. She's also known as the Progressive Culture Warrior, and she is a marriage and family therapist, and she's written a book. I, I just, If you're looking at the streaming video, I just put the uh, cover of the book up on the streaming video. It's called Saving America's Grace, and uh, let's just talk about this. Uh, rethinking Family Values, Moral Politics, and Culture War. Oh, my gosh, did we have some moral politics issues this last campaign season? Holy mackerel. And you know you you hear it all the time. I mean, I've heard we've heard it in local politics as well as national politics. Sometimes it, it's really hard to believe that these people and and then and then they get along after it's all over. I, and like Nancy Pelosi now is having a good time with with Trump. Where you go figure. Uh, Michelle Dean, good morning, Michelle. How are you? Good morning, Larry. I'm great. Thank you. Where are Thanks you? For having me. Where, <clears throat> you're welcome. Where are you calling from? Uh, California. Oh well, thank you for getting up early, and and I apologize for whatever mix-up we had earlier. So, so what are you exploring in the book, Saving America's Grace? Well, I um, basically I'm looking at uh, a new moral story for America. Uh, for the longest time, we've had the religious right define what is and is not moral <laughs> in our country, and a lot of our politics have been focused on that. We've kind of co-opted moral values rhetoric, branded themselves as the party of superior morality, and all we need to do is look at who is the leader of their party today, and we can <laughs> okay. actually say, maybe this is not true. <laughs> yeah, well, I, you know, I, I think that probably is the official perspective, but I think everybody never really thought that. Like, like we have friends of probably every party, every religion, every whatever. Right. And and I think the average person with common sense says, you know, that's a little bit uncalled for when, when things that are nasty are it's, said. Exactly. And, um, and what I hope to do is create a new conversation because while we may be thinking these things, like, oh, that's a bunch of baloney. <laughs> you know, that's not true. They're not right. acting in a moral way. Look at all this hypocrisy. What I say is we need to start having a new conversation. We really have let the right co-op this conversation since the Reagan years, since the moral majority came on the scene. And unfortunately, because of that, it's been a big, big distraction. We've had all this lack of character infiltrating politics, and it has um, really been a problem. Oh, my, my dog's barking. I hear that. I hear That's that. okay. I'm trying to get, it. Yeah, trying to get a word that. in. Yeah, trying to get a word in. Well, let me... Let me uh, I, I don't yeah. mean... Uh -huh. Okay, in, in an effort to not... I don't want to argue, but I, I think I can, uh -huh. I can see a debate here a little bit. Because if I'm uh -huh. if I'm watching Bill Maher, I don't know that that's true. If I'm even mm -hmm. even if I'm watching David Letterman when he used to be on, it wasn't true. Uh -huh. uh, if I'm listening to Rush Limbaugh, it's true. So I think it depends on who you're listening to, right? Um, when you say what is true and what is not true, what what is it that you're referring uh, okay. to? Okay, if you if you say morality is dictated by the right. And you're, uh -huh. and you're listening to Bill Maher. Is 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 morality dictated from the right on Bill Maher show? I don't think so. No, no. But but what I'm saying is that we haven't had an alternative conversation. You know, the uh, the Democrats, the left, have really kind of given over the moral values conversation to the right. They never came up with their own moral narrative. What is it that they're doing? Why do they do what they do? Why do they believe what they believe? Well, I think what that, is it that they're fighting for? Okay, here's what I... Think that, Okay, here's mm -hmm. how I see it. I, I'm, gosh, I, I don't mean to be uh, contrary to you, but mm -hmm. no, I, I have a conversation. I okay. I have a friend in San Francisco. He's uh, mm -hmm. I, I would say he would consider himself very liberal. He's an artsy guy. He's a, he's a poet. He's a, mm -hmm. he's one of the smartest mm -hmm. one of the smartest guys I know. Clearly a Democrat. Um, and if we disagree on something, the part that we agree on is what we want done. For example, we don't want homeless people let's do something real simple nobody right. nobody wants homeless mm -hmm. people but maybe his thoughts on how to fix that problem are different than my thoughts mm -hmm. I, I don't know that one either one of us is being immoral uh it's just a different philosophy on whether right. okay so that is right okay so that conversation right. happens well i'm not sure that it does i think that well it probably does on the level of you and your friends uh -huh. but on the level of our part, politics we're so partisan we've been you know just been fighting back and forth and i think it is important to say what are our common goals and we may have different ways to get there yeah but but it's good to listen because you may be able to you know i think that there is something about finding a common ground 
a middle way. Yeah, yeah. But, I, that's absolutely but, true, yeah. So, so, but what I see that has been happening, I don't know if you, it, to be honest, I don't even know, you know, like your your listenership and, you know, kind of what the angle is left to right. It doesn't matter. It, it's everything. The point is, the point is, is that um, on the right, there has been very little focus on social justice issues. There's been more concern about people getting birth control or what the people are doing in the in the privacy of the bedroom than those living cold and hungry on the street. See. There's been more concern about the birth control than there is about gun control. And and the thing is is that these personal issues are not the business of the government. And if people have certain moral values, right. biblical race values right. or whatever, that's fine. They can live that. But it is not the place of the government to be dictating what people do in their intimate personal life. Right. It is the place of the government to be taking care of each other. That is the point of government. Okay, but and our founders understood it took <clears throat> virtue to uh, to run a democracy. You have to be able to balance self-serving interests with the common good. So our the common good before Mich mm -hmm. Michelle, our discussion. Uh, let's mm -hmm. look. At, let's look at birth control. I don't think that I don't want people to have birth control. I and I, mm -hmm. and, and I, I you could talk. You're probably more educated on this than I am, but. I just think the the position is not about morality as much as it is about taxpayer paying for somebody else to have uh, birth control. Mm -hmm. I, I think they're they're fine with you using birth control. They just don't want to have taxpayer money paying for it. That's mm -hmm. what that's what I think the discussion is. Well, I, I think that the great majority of people feel the way that you do. The most vocal segment of the population is about very much so about what people are doing with with their you know whether we're teaching people sex education or abstinence only education in the schools that's well, you know their money they uh, right it's it's well it is, but they but there again it's a tax mm -hmm. it's a taxpayer it's a money thing because if i'm sending my child to school and i want to be the one who teaches sex to my child uh, and I don't feel like it's the school's job to teach sex or religion mm -hmm. or anything mm -hmm. or anything of that nature. Then I mm -hmm. then I think I should say, well, wait a minute, I'm paying taxes for you to do something that I'm kind of against. Why why don't we just stick to reading, writing, arithmetic, and we'll leave religion to the churches and the temples and the families. Mm -hmm. And and, uh, mm -hmm. and so I I see it as I, I understand what you're saying, the morality of it. Mm -hmm. But I think it's the money of it that, that every, most people are arguing about. I think so, too. Okay. So, um, I do. I believe that a lot of people do have concern about the money. And, and I think if we were just to get back to what really the point of the book is, it's not so much about these various issues, but it's about character. It is about quality of character within uh, our leaders. In right. a democratic society, once again, our founders knew that it took virtue in order to be a self-governing uh, well, government. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, okay, and do and we have to ask ourselves: Do we have that? Do we focus on that? It takes virtue to be an upstanding citizen. <laughs> we need to be able to live by the golden rule that a society does not work well otherwise. Right, and and I know. So, that, and I mean, we need virtue as being a parent. We need to be able to have a sound character in order to raise children with sound character. So that's pretty much my basic point. <laughs> okay, absolutely, and yeah. I, I don't disagree with that. And and uh, clearly, if you had listened to the show during the campaigning, you would have heard us criticizing mm -hmm. Donald Trump left and right for things he said that were definitely out of line that just didn't seem ca cl there were things that were just not classy um things things that hillary yeah. did H hillary did though and i hate to have the same argument again but things that she did may not have been in that same category but mm -hmm. she was in charge of things and she was she had some inc incompetence in her job where he had some unethical things in his presentation because he had no job yeah i mean right. we didn't have uh -huh. anything, to, anything to really look at mm -hmm. the guy with the, uh -huh. the guy with the most character was was bernie by the way yeah the guy who <laughs> i think had uh, yeah but he had absolutely but he had some mm -hmm. issues uh, we all had some issues with some of us about some things that he wanted and again it came down to money he wants mm -hmm. some social programs that the programs were wonderful but we'd rather pay for it voluntarily than being forced to pay for for taxes, if that makes sense to you. 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, the thing about Bernie, he led with his heart. He went into it with his heart. You know, he spoke to the heart, he engaged the heart. And all of that was great. And we do have to ask, you know, how much of this it was practical. But I think that what was, the good news is that he really did start a new conversation in our country. In our country. Oh, that's a good point. Um, yeah, that's a good point. And and um, and I, what I like, I mean, I really feel that you know Bernie did have this virtue. Like he is out there really trying to do what he believes is right. <laughs> right. Um, and but uh, yeah. Go and, ahead. and you know who else did? Um, ben Carson did, and 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 in history, so did uh, Jimmy Carter. And and oh, yes. and yet, you know, you know, every, I mean, they all have their own legacies, and, and we'll see what Ben Carson does. So, um, Michelle, I, I kind of wish we had more time. I, I know we had an issue with the, the timing earlier, so we'd love to have you back. The book is called Saving America's Grace. Uh, Michelle has a great website. I went to the website, which is where I got the picture of the book. By the way, five star review yes. on Amazon. So mm-hmm. you're doing really good, Michelle. Michelle oh, Dean, thank you. With two E's, <laughs> Michelle Dean. Michelle, thank you so much for being on with us today. And thank you for having me. And okay, uh, take we'll, care. we'll be right back. News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. President Trump starting the day meeting with executives from the auto industry who are told the Trump administration will be friendly to their needs. We're bringing manufacturing back to the United States Big League. We're reducing taxes very substantially and we're reducing unnecessary regulations. And we want regulations, but we want real regulations that mean something. The president has said he'll eliminate more than 75 percent of environmental regulations. Fox News confirms the president has asked FBI